Yeah. Hey guys, how you doing? Awesome. So my name is Danny. I'm the Canada Goose guy, as you've all been coming up to me. Are you the Canada Goose guy? I'm the Canada Goose guy. And I'm going to talk to you today about swimming upstream, um, going against the flow. Swimming upstream, hang on. Here's a picture of my salmon swimming upstream. And uh, I'm not sure what you expected from me today uh, or what you expected me to be today. Um, and I guess you may have seen the video that was out there or not, but I can tell you for sure that I'm not uh, necessarily what the world thinks I should be from a business point of view, from ending up doing what I'm doing. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. But the world thinks that I should have done well in math class. I could watch it over there. The world thinks that I should have done well in math class. The world thinks that I should wear suits to work every day. And uh, interestingly, an interesting statistic for you is that 96% of Forbes 400 CEOs actually do have their MBA. And that's Interesting, I mean, you know, we're not quite for, you know, Forbes 400 company yet. Maybe we will be one day. But directionally, it suggests that the world you know, believes that you have to have a certain pedigree in order to be in business. Now, you know, and that's what it takes to succeed. So, you know, what I want to tell you is I'm not, you know, before I say anything else, I'm certainly not telling you that you shouldn't get your MBA. I'm certainly not telling you that these things are unimportant. I think that these things are important. I think there's a lot of things that you can learn that are very important. But I, what I do believe very strongly is that that's not enough. And... Uh, as you'll see, I have done things very differently in my life. Um, that's a picture of me from uh, <clears throat> back in high school. I went to alternative high school. I originally, I was in a normal high school, and I didn't like it, so I went to alternative high school. Um, additionally, I used to cut the alligators off my shirts, and you may think that, you know, well, this is, this is the Canada Goose guy who believes in brands. Like, what, what's, what are you talking about? Why do you used to cut the alligators off your shirts? Well, I actually have a certain point of view on brands, and I believe in real brands, but at the time, I, I was... And I thought I was rebellious. I didn't like to wear brands. I didn't like to represent myself that way. So I cut the alligators off my shirts. When I went to university, I studied English lit and philosophy. I did not study business. And before I went to university, I traveled around Europe. There are some pictures of me traveling around Europe. Um, and uh, I didn't just travel around Europe the normal way and backpack. I actually bought a car and drove around Europe, lived in my car for eight months, and uh, um, slept in my car, ate by the side of the road, and basically lived like a homeless person with a car. Uh, <laughs> And uh, to say the least, I, um, no, that's not the right one, is it? Maybe it is. To say the least, I didn't do what I was supposed to do, and for sure, if you ask my parents, they'll, they'll agree with you. So, um, you know, and uh, even, even to the point of, um, yeah, so anyways, <laughs> let's check that one. But, so I wanted, what I want to tell you today is that different equals success, and I think that, um, you know, one great idea can be very powerful, and and one different idea can help you be very powerful and very successful. And not only does difference equal success, but difference also equals leadership. Because if you could be successful by being different, or you could take a different idea and have it be successful, then by definition you become a leader, and leadership is very important. Uh, as additionally, um, if you do what everybody else is doing when you're young, uh, why would you do anything different when you're older? Right? So the time to start doing things that are different is now. It's the time to start out there and to go and get new experiences and do different things. Because I think, you know, and getting out of your comfort zone. And for me, one of those things, for example, uh, you know, and I think the point is that it doesn't even stop when you're young. It's, something, it's a life experience that you kind of embrace for your entire life. Right? And for me, uh, even in public speaking, like you know, as, a, as a president and CEO of a large organization, it's the kind of thing that you get asked to do a lot. And as of two, three years ago, I never did this at all. And, uh, you know, you have to press, uh, you know, push your limits in your comfort zone and, um, and uh, get out there and do things that you're not used to doing. So I'm going to share with you a couple, um, couple examples of how this thinking impacts, uh, has impacted my success and Canada Goose's success. So number one is made in Canada. And, um, you know, Canada Goose, you may or may not know, our products are made in Canada. Uh, about 10 years or so ago, we decided definitively to stay made in Canada. And this was a big deal. At the time, the conventional business wisdom and logic was not to be made in Canada. It was to go offshore, have your goods produced over there because uh, it's far cheaper to do so and you can, com you can compete. And a lot of people at the time, 10 years ago, were saying, look, we're going to go offshore. We're going to produce our stuff offshore because, um, first of all, nobody cares anymore uh, about made in Canada or about not even Canada. In our case, if it's Canada, it could also be... Um, it could also be the United States or Europe or wherever that product was made. But I, in our case, it's Canada. So everybody was leaving, and at that time, we decided to stay. We said, look, you know, if we could stay in Canada, at the time, we were a very small company, and we said, you know, if we could stay in Canada, and if we could succeed, succeed in staying in Canada, we're going to position ourselves very well. We're going to 
we're going to be the only people left. We're going to be the only one left, and as such, we could have a competitive advantage. And even further, we didn't believe, and I didn't believe, that people didn't care about Made in Canada. I believe that people strongly cared about Made in Canada. And, and, and so we did stay at Made in Canada while everybody else left. And I've got to say that uh, on the, in, the, in the context of one idea that was important, and going against the flow and something to doing something that not everybody else was doing. Had we not made that decision and had we not done that, we might not be here today. In fact, I'd go as far as to say as we probably wouldn't be here today. I think our Canadian identity around the world being a global company is very important. And um, that's one example of, uh, of, of um, being different and going against the flow and doing things that everyone else is not doing uh, and taking a leadership position. Another example is, uh, as, it, as it relates to, to what we do is uh, how we engage in charity and philanthropy. And, you know, a lot of companies uh, today, and, and certainly it's changing a little bit, but not entirely, will just say, you know, they feel like, you know, you're a company, you're profitable, we should cut a check to some organization, maybe the United Way, maybe, maybe another organization. They're all great organizations, and they feel that they're doing their duty to society. And we take it a step further. We even take it a couple steps further. And uh, what we do at Canada Goose is we build communities. And, and, and uh, and that's very important. Any, any company can donate money to charity. What we do, I'll tell you a story from something that we did. Um, it started five years ago. It was our 50th anniversary, actually. And uh, we have a slogan that says, ask anyone who knows. So what we decided to do with that was to go up to northern Canada. And northern Canada is where we began uh, our company and our brand started up there uh, many, many years ago. And we decided to go and engage with some, some women who live in Pond Inlet. And these women, what their job is in their community is to sew jackets. That's what they do. They, they sew jackets for their communities, they give their, and they don't get paid for it. They just do it, and they give the jackets out. We decided to go out there and speak to them and uh, to bring them down to Toronto and to make a jacket with them, and, um, and we did. So we went up there. Their names were Mika and Rebecca, and we brought them down to Toronto. And um, I got some pictures of this here, actually. There you go. Um, and um, and uh, so we worked with them, and I, I, it, was a, it, was a, it was a great initiative and a great, a great uh, experience. And what came out of this experience was a couple of things. Um, uh, we learned a lot. Now, one of the things we learned after we did, the, did this, did this uh, project was I was walking around the factory with them, showing them the factory, and, they, and uh, they kept looking at these pieces of scrap material that we were throwing out. And they were saying, can we have that? And obviously, I said, for sure you can have that. And it dawned on me a couple of things. First of all, that they didn't have all the best materials to use where they, where they came from, number one. Number two, we had a waste problem at the time anyways. It was a problem that we were trying to solve. We were like, what are we going to do with all of our excess fabric? So we decided, you know, so, it made, so the logical progression was, well, why don't we take all this stuff and send it up north and create these Canada Goose resource centers where people can uh, come to these centers, they can get these fa the fabric for free, and they can make the jackets they've been making, and we do a couple of things. Number one, we solve a waste problem. Number two, we... This is our form of charity, and, and it works very well in building communities. And it does a third thing for us. Uh, and for me, I consider this to be marketing. This is the way we do marketing. A lot of companies will go and take a glossy ad campaigns, but we don't. But for us, we engage, the northern community, as I said before, is our original, authentic community that, that we don't, I mean, they, they make their own jackets, but they're also our, our customers, right? And as our company is growing and getting bigger and the fashion market and all this stuff, we never want to lose our core consumer. So being able to build these communities and build these relationships with, with these communities is critical. And, and so for us, being able you know, to achieve all three things, solving a waste problem, um, giving charity, building communities, and achieving a marketing angle is, is, uh, is important. So that's sort of differentiation, that sort of different way of looking at charity puts us in a leadership position. So. Those are some of my stories and our stories. And you might be asking yourself, so what can I, so what? Like, great, Danny, that's awesome. Good, good, good idea. But like, what can I do? Where do I get, you know, what, you know how do I get my big idea? Where does that, where does that come from? And, um, you know, how do I go against the flow? I, I don't even know what I want to do. And, and the answer to that, from my point of view, is you have to get experience. And I think a lot of people today have been saying similar things, but you have to, you have to get experience. I think that go out there, push your comfort zone, do things you don't normally do, because to me, I think that different experiences provide uh, context uh, and they provide perspective. And it's context and, it's, it's context and perspective that's going to enable you to see things that other people can't see. So, you know, go get experiences. One day you're going to be looking at the same thing that everybody else is looking at. But because you've been around and you've seen different things and seen a lot of different things from a lot of different perspectives, you're going to look at the same thing everybody else is looking at and you're going to see something different. And I think that that kind of thinking characterizes you know, the Made in Canada decision that, that was so critical for us, as it also characterizes, um, you know, the way we think about everything that we do. 
So, yeah, that, that was me getting experiences over there. So, um, the other part of this which is really important is that a great idea without execution is just someone else's success story. Obviously, I think, it's, and I think it's a very important piece of it. It's great to go and to be rebellious and to, you know, get all different experiences in whatever way that manifests itself for you. Um, but once you have that idea, it's really important that you do something with it. It's really important that you take the initiative. And I think a lot of people today have been speaking to that point as well, which is a very important point. And I think that um, it does pay off and it can have a very profound impact. And I'm going to finish off with a quick story going back to, um, to my experiences um, in Europe and about Made in Canada. And uh, so uh, I guess, I don't know, a few years later I went back to Europe. It was my first time going back to Europe with Canada Goose and with the company. And I didn't at the time know if I was going to stay working there or not. You know, what I, my path in life was never predetermined and I never thought at all I'd even work in this company, let alone run it and grow it into a global brand. But I went back to Europe and I was talking to a lot of people there. And, um, I, spoke, I decided that after we went to a certain trade show, I decided that after this trade show, we would, uh, we would then travel, I would travel up, up north to Scandinavia with our Scandinavian distribution partners at the time. And I learned, I, I listened to a lot of what people had to say, and a lot of people were telling me how important Made in Canada was to them. And at the same time, as I was talking about earlier when we were making this decision, and I really heard that loud and clear, and I think that a lot of people, and obviously a lot of people, put in that situation, would have not listened to that advice, would have not taken that to heart, and would have said, no, you know what, guys, like, thank you, but everybody's not doing that. Everybody's going to Asia for their manufacturing, and, and, and I'm not going to listen to this. And I think that the reason why I was able to do that at the time was because I'd spent a lot of time living on the streets in Europe, uh, and I had spent a lot of time really understanding the mentality. So when I heard it, I was able to see how big of an idea that that was. And uh, I think that made all the world a difference to me and uh, to where I find myself today. So I uh, encourage you to start going against the stream now and get all the context and perspective that you need to do in whatever way that means for you. And that hopefully uh, one day you'll find your one big idea. And um, thank you very much. <laughs>